Welcome back to our weekly leadership vlog here at Urshan College, the Leadership Minute. So glad you're joining us again this week. Before we get started in uh, talking about today's content, just want to remind you that coming up November 18 and 19 is our leadership conference, the Urshan Leadership Conference, and I hope you're able to join us. We're really excited as we're talking about leading in this, this pandemic, post-pandemic world, trying to figure out where we're at even on that, which is a leadership issue. And we're thrilled that uh, Dr. David Bernard, the General Superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church, will be joining us. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to that night. Also, on, on Friday, we're going to have uh, Brother Daryl Johns, Brother Tim Zuniga, Brother Marvin Mitchell, myself, Brother Michael Wisdom. We'll all be a part of that, have uh, breakout sessions, panel sessions. It's for everybody. This is for pastors, senior pastors, staff members department heads, lay ministers, those who just have a passion want to grow in leadership, it's for you. So please make sure to, to come and join us November 18, 19 here on the Winsville campus of Urshan College and Urshan Graduate School of Theology. We look forward to welcoming you, getting to know you a little bit better. Make sure to come up and, and say hi, introduce yourself if we don't already know each other. And uh, let's continue to network and build relationships of people who are like-minded when it comes to the topic of leadership. Today, I want to talk to you about um, organizations and organizational life cycles. Uh, something that's maybe not the most popular thing, we don't even like to think about life cycles, but this is a normal part of life and leadership. In fact, biblically, when we go to the beginning, we realize that there is a launch, a beginning, and that's Genesis, the book of beginnings, where in the beginning God created. And, and started this natural process that we are all impacted by today in our life cycle. But going on, the Bible gives us further direction. Genesis 1, 4 and 5 talks about that God saw the light and was good. He divided the light from the darkness. And it says this, so the evening and the morning were the first day. And it, it's breaking it up into this time cycle. Uh, going verse 14, God said, let there be firmament in the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons, for days and for years. So the scripture is letting us know at the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, he also put in motion uh, these cycles, uh, a day. We talk about a 24 hour day uh, where the sun rises and sets. We talk about seasons. Um, we, we joke in Chicagoland, where I'm from, we say we have five seasons in the year, that there's spring, there's summer, there's winter, and there's fall, and then there's construction season. If you've ever driven on our highways, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But we realize that this is sort of the natural flow of life, there are seasons, and things change. We even use life when we talk about maybe the clock or, or time. People will talk about the dawning of a new day of life, maybe at birth. Uh, we'll talk about the summer, the midday of adulthood. We'll talk about the fall, sort of the latter years of life, and even the winter, the evening, the conclusion of our time on earth. The scripture says it's appointed unto man once to die. And so we know that even though beginning is a natural thing, birth is a natural thing, we also realize that, that passing from this life is a natural process that God has put in motion. In fact, the scripture uses this, this analogy that I'm using today to warn us about the return of the Lord and the rapture of the church. Matthew 25 and 6 says, And at midnight the cry was, was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. We, we speak of this, uh, of the midnight hour and the, and the midnight cry in our songs and our messages, just to remind people that there is this, this cycle, this, there is this period of time that we have. And so we talk about past, present, future, seasons. All of these things are talking about life cycles and seasons of life. So life, this is a part of life. And when we talk about leadership, we have to realize that that is also a natural part of leading organizations. When we talk about stages, uh, we talk about stages of development with individuals, whether it's from infancy and toddler, childhood, preschool, grade school, adolescence, adulthood, maturity. We use these stages when we talk about psychological and social development to talk about us as individuals. 
Uh, in fact, I've joked for a while saying I'm, I'm, I need a midlife crisis. I'm looking for somebody to join me in my midlife crisis. That in itself, when we even talk about things of that nature, those are, those are seasonal or those are periods of time on this developmental life cycle. There's ups and downs in life. And I want to argue for you today that this is not only true for us as individuals, physically, it's also true for our organizations. There are life cycles to organizations. There are launches, there are births of organizations. Maybe an entrepreneur launches something or a church planter. He has that first prayer meeting, that first service to launch a new church. No matter where you go, maybe it's a ministry and you have that, that idea, that vision of a ministry or a product and it was in your mind and then there came that time where you're gonna launch that and it's day one that you start a new initiative. And, and so those are exciting times when we talk about getting something new off the ground. But everybody knows that just because you launch something doesn't mean it's easy. Just because you had that first prayer meeting doesn't mean that you have an established church. And so it takes a lot of hard work to get something new off the ground. And uh, they, those have their unique challenges, from challenges in marketing that no one knows who you are or even that you're there. Many times when we're launching a church, we might be doing so in a park, build, park district building, maybe it's a hotel ballroom, that we're getting something off the ground. And, and we have a challenge of letting people know that we've started uh, different challenges from an established church that maybe has been on its own property, its own location, maybe for generations. And so these are the challenges of this stage. But once we launch something, it's try, trying to get it off the ground. Most entrepreneurial uh, businesses at one time, the, the stats were, didn't last more than three years because it is tough work to get something off the ground. However, once we pass that, we start getting some momentum and we start growing, then it's, it's about keeping that growth, sustaining that growth and sustained health. And there's a lot of models about organizational life cycles, but typically that's where there is a, a turn or a shift that takes place. In fact, most people look at life cycles sort of like a bell curve, that there is a launch that begins and then there is growth and momentum and sustained growth, but eventually there goes into maybe a maintenance mode and decline and death, just like there would be possibly with a human. It starts out with growth and birth and, and adolescence and then the prime of life, a term we use when someone maybe is at their most productive and, and profitable years and then the decline and eventual death. And that would happen in an organization. That uh, decline would start and then maintenance mode and eventually an organization could be on life support and then if something doesn't happen, an organization would die. And when we talk about this, whether it's the context of a church or ministry, that, that's a discouraging thought to think that the church we're planting or the ministry we're starting could one day die. And so the question is, is for those of us who have eternity in mind, we're not just leading for the moment. We want something that is going to endure. In fact, we're interested in legacy. We want something that's going to endure beyond us, past us. What is the solution to this this reality of a life cycle. Well, most leadership theorists would be to say that you have to start a new curve. Remember, I use the example of the bell curve. And so when that begins to start the decline, most would say that somewhere turn health and, and growth, we need to start a brand new curve. And that's where, whether it's innovation or creativity, uh, you know, solving problems help us to, to continue to start new growth patterns and, and new times of momentum and growth in our organizations. That's something that we are all interested in, which means that change is an inevitable part of life. There are ups and downs in life. In fact, ups and downs are healthy. When it comes to your brain, when it comes to your heart, the last thing you want someone who is observing your heart and your brain is to see a straight line. <laughs> that means that you're gone. But if you look at uh, EEGs, EKGs, you'll find out they have ups and downs, ups and downs, natural rhythms of life. And organizations and life have those natural rhythms. And so when we talk about leadership today and organizational life cycles, I want us to realize that leadership is something that must be constant. We don't get to a place to where we can coast, that uh, you know, we can just sort of allow the organization to go. 
But this is uh, the leadership challenges that we have are ongoing. And as leaders, we must rise to the challenge to make sure that the organizations that we're leaving, the ministries that we're leading, or the initiatives, or the business that we're leading, doesn't have a short life cycle, but that it continues to grow and develop to fulfill its mission, whatever's happening in the world. One of the interesting stories that, that go along this line is the story of 3M. Many times I'll ask people, do you know what 3M, the company 3M stands for? And it's not uncommon for people to sort of scratch their head and look and, and say, no, I, I'm really not sure. Well, 3M stands for the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company. Now, many people, if they don't know the story, are very surprised to find that out, is that 3M, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, started as a small-scale mining venture, of course, in Minnesota. And, and it began in 1902, so it, it has, you know, over a, a century ago, five founders were a part of uh, it, its start. However, it wasn't really successful when it came to mining. And uh, when you think about 3M, mining is probably the last thing you think of. You're thinking of sticky notes and paper products and a variety of 3M that uh, products that are on the market or available to you. And that's because the founders, even though mining wasn't working, they persisted in their organization to see what is it that we can do to fulfill our vision of having a company and making an impact. And so they got involved in scientific, technical, marketing innovations that has made 3M not only a household name, it's on the Fortune 500 list. Today, more than 60,000 3M products, more than 60,000 are used in homes, businesses, schools, hospitals, and other industries. Uh, 3M has corporate sales in 70 countries and uh, excuse me, has operations in 70 countries and sales in over 200 countries. And one third of sales come from products that have been invented in the last five years. The last five years. Why? Because 3M has made change and innovation a part of their culture. From a mining company that started making adjustments in order to survive to a, a, a company that thrives today and as a household name, change and innovation has become a part of who they are as a country. And that's how come they continue to be effective more than a, th a hundred years later. And so when we think about our organizations, it might not be exactly what we thought it was gonna be or the ministry or the things that we're involved in. We might have to make these sort of, what we talk about pivots along the way. But in doing so, what we do is we keep our organizations active and engaged in making a difference. So when you go back to your organization, whether it's your church, your ministry, whatever you're involved in, and you see it starting to, to, to sputter or maybe having some problems, realize that this is not something to avoid. This is the opportunity for us to make it something better. Not only something better and more effective, but something that's gonna to continue to have impact for years to come. I'm thankful that in our churches, we have churches that are over 100 years old, that means they've gone through generations of people, but they know what their mission is and they've adjusted, they've adapted, and they continue to be effective in their day and time. So thank you for joining us today for the Urshan Leadership Minute. I hope something that we shared has been either encouraging to you or maybe stretching, uh, maybe has sort of mined your, your brain, your, your creativity for ideas for your future. If so, please share your thoughts in the comment section below and engage with us and join us next week for the Urshan Leadership Minute. We look forward to seeing you then. God bless.